ازيكم يا شباب هو ايه اللي احنا شفناه ده الاول كل سنه وانتم طيبين بمناسبه الاعياد يوم 24 ابريل قرر لوك ايكنز واندي فارينجتون ان هم ينفذوا مغامره ما اتعملتش قبل كده وان هم يبلدوا يبدلوا الطيارات مع بعض وهم في الجو واحد ينزل ينط من الطياره وهي طايره ويركب في الطيارات الثاني والثاني يعمل زيه تعالوا نشوف مع بعض Hey man, that's why we're here where we are. Yep. Everybody's safe. Parachute system worked just like it was supposed to. Yep. It's a little thing. We there's no way to test it till you do it. طيب الطيارة الثانية إيه اللي خلاها توصل للحالة دي؟ تعال نشوف كده. بصوا واخدين بالنا الطيارة السرقة بقت خارج السيطرة شايفين عمالة تلف حوالين نفسها ازاي؟ ما بص هي دي فرصة كويسة بقى عشان نتكلم عن الترمينال فيلوستي، الترمينال فيلوستي أي حاجة بتحرك في ال... بتقع سقوط حر بتقع بسرعة 9.8 متر على الثانية تربيع يعني سرعتك بتزيد 9.8 متر في الثانية كل ثانية لو فاكرين ثانوية عامة يعني. مهم إنه في برضه مش بنفضل من السرعة مش تفضل تزيد كده للأبد. عند وقت معين مقاومة الهواء بتخلي السرعة ما تزيدش دي بنسميها الترمينال فيلوستي الترمينال فيلوستي دي اللي هي بالنسبة للجسم البشري يعني بتبقى في حدود ال210 كم في الساعة الطيارات دي متعدلة بحيث ان هي وهي بتقع بالطريقة دي تبقى بتماتش السرعة دي اللي هي 130 ميل في الساعة او 210 220 كم في الساعة بصوا بقى يا شباب تعالوا نشوف مع بعض ايه اللي خلى الطياره الزرقاء تلف حوالين نفسها كده بصوا المقطع اللي جاي ده 
مش هتلاقي الارقام اللي عمال يقولها دي ان هي ارقام الاتجاه بتاع الطياره ودي بالنا ان هي اتغيرت من 75 ل 68 والمفروض تبقى 70 زي الطياره الثانيه والطياره الثانيه مظبوطه ما اتغيرتش فالطياره دي فيها حاجه يا يعني اما الطياره نفسها مش قادره تمسك الاتجاه يا يعني اما الاوتو بايلوت بتاعها مش قادر يمسك الاتجاه وده اللي خلاها بعد ما خرج منها بقى فاش طيار بقت خارج السيطره ده رأي المتواضع يعني لسه بدري طبعا على ان احنا نعرف بالظبط ايه اللي حصل بس ده مجرد رأي المبدئي المتواضع جدا طبعا خدتوا بالكم ان هو بعد ما قال هيدنج لوك اند انجيج الهيدنج اتغير من من 70 ل 72 واحد هيقول لي احنا هنستفيد ايه من الجنان اللي كون دول عملوه هقول لك اتعلمنا حاجات كتيرة جدا عن الايرو دايناميكس بص مثلا المقطع اللي جاي ده So when you're actually going to be doing this you're at 14,000 feet with Andy so you're going at 140 miles an hour you're 100 yards apart from each other and then you start to dive so help take us through the process of when you're diving and you apply the speed break What's happening to the airplane? What are the aerodynamics involved here? It's really crazy. So this <laughs> speed break is on the belly of this plane. Right. It comes down, sticks 90 degrees to the line of flight. We're diving down. That's what's keeping us from going very fast, right? That break does a bunch of things for us. It helps slow us down, but it also hurts us aerodynamically. It kind of blanks out the tail. There's a giant burble that comes behind that break. The burble behind the break is like a When you're driving your car, you get that nasty wind behind the side mirror. Yep. That's exactly what's happening there. So you have that going on behind there. Um, we also had some problems with our tail. Our, our surface areas were starting to vibrate and shake. So how do you prevent that from happening? I did notice there's some certain design decisions, like the brake isn't exactly connected to the, the fuselage of the plane, right? Was there something involved in how you, yeah. you know, correct for that? Exactly. So the... The brake used to go all the way to the belly of the plane. What we found is when we put this big speed brake down, it pitched the plane over just like we wanted, right. but the plane was not able to go reach 90 degrees. It would stop at about 70 degrees. We spent a month. <laughs> I spent tens of 20 of hours flying this plane straight at the ground at 70 degrees, and we Going, couldn't make it go anymore. Why can't we? Yeah. We had a little accident one day. We had a little oil come out, a little burp of oil come out of the overflow. Right. That oil almost gave us a viz of what was happening back there. Just like this, right? In the right? sunlight, exactly like the what same we thing. had You're this like, set here. You're like, wait. <laughs> what was happening was blanking out the tail. It was actually causing the air to push down on the tail and try to lift the nose. So we were fighting. The airplane was actually being bent in half. So by removing that top plate, it lets a little bit of clean air sit past the fuselage makes the tail work like it's supposed to. And now the plane is actually flying the way it was designed to back in the 60s. What an amazing problem to solve. <laughs> it was crazy and we came across it by accident. The other thing that's interesting, if you notice the holes all over the speed brake. Yeah. Okay, those holes are actually to stop vibration. If you put a solid plate, you put your hand out the window, it's super hard. Right. You spread your fingers a little bit. You have the same surface area, but it's just a little bit smoother. Sure. That's exactly what we did. Just let a little bit of air break through there. Ah, so keep that smooth trajectory downward, right? Exactly. Because I'm assuming if you get more vibrations, you're going to veer off course. The plane is less predictable. Yeah. And we're talking a tiny degree. If you vary sure. more than two degrees in any direction, it's about 15 miles per hour. For us, horizontally right. across the ground. Yeah, and at 12,000 feet per minute, like that's a huge difference. Oh, you got to get, made. yeah, you're back and forth. So <laughs> oh the more God. stable we can make the plane, the better. Ah, incredible. Thank you. That. <laughs> في حاجات تانية كتيرة كانت موجودة ممكن نستفيد منها بس أنا مرضتش أطول عن كده يعني عشان وقت الحلقة ما تنسوش بقى اللايك والشير والاشتراك في القناة